Titus chapter 2. I shall read from verses 1 to verse 5. In English first. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women, likewise, that they be in behaviour as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. In Chinese, please, verses 1 to 5. <laughs> May God bless the reading of His Word. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for journey mercies to thy house. And above all, for this great privilege to be able to worship you and fellowship one with another in person in church. A privilege that few Christians in the world have so freely in the world right now. And we pray once again for cleansing, for washing in the blood of our Saviour as we approach you. And Father, be in our midst to teach us. Lord, may your Holy Spirit open our eyes of understanding. Because we as seniors want to change. So teach us and we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now please remember this is God's word to a young pastor, Titus, to teach the elders, the elderly, rather, in church. So I don't want us to lose context on that. So in verse 1, Peter is told now, but Peter, uh, sorry, but Titus, now you must speak these things. There are sound doctrines. Then in verse 2, that the aged men learn all these things. Then verse 3, that the aged women learn all these things. So, why are you here this morning? It must be, Lord, we realize that in the test in the Bible there are things that you gave to us as the agent to learn. So please speak to us. And the young people who are present. This is what you ought to be when you are aged. But you cannot be like that unless you begin when you are young. So you too must listen and say, Lord, I must start being like that so that when I am aged, that is who I am already. I'm glad you are here. Although there is not much logistics for you to help in. But you want to learn? And you also want to fellowship with the elderly in church. There should be no lines between the elderly and the young. Yes, 
So today we move for the aged men. Look at verse 2. Aged men first. The last time we learned sound in faith. Sound in faith. So when it comes to the Christian faith, both in doctrines and in living, even when you're aged, you are supposed to be growing in that and you are supposed to be very clear-minded about the doctrines and the practices. As alert and as, um, as uh, well-versed as you are in many things that you have accumulated in knowledge as an aged person, you have to ask yourself, am I as knowledgeable in the Word of God and in how I need to live as an aged senior man? Now let us look at the next thing now. In love, in charity, sorry, in charity. But notice one thing, please notice that. God did not say now the aged must be charitable. God did not say elderly be charitable. God did not say simply be charitable. But God said be sound in charity. So what God wants the aged men to learn is not just be charitable but be sound in charity. Now, I want to combine this with the aged women that is in verse 4. Now, in verse 4, God also talked to the aged woman about love. Now, last time we learned to love your husband. Now we want to learn about to love your ch- to love their children. You see, God also told the aged women. Now you must teach young women to love their children. Just like God tells the aged man, now you, when it comes to love, you must be sound in that love. You say, well, we know how to love our children. Of course, we will know how to tell others, other young women to love their children. An aged man say, well, you know, I, I'm, I want to be loving. I, I think I know how to be loving. But you see, there is love and there is whether that love is biblical love. Remember the word sound means, in this case, it means a healthy life, a healthy, right? Healthy, it talks about health. Is your love a healthy love? Because there can be unhealthy love towards others and towards your children. Is your love clear-minded? This sober also not only talks about healthiness, the healthiness brings clarity of mind. Now say, well, we've lived a long time. Look at our children, we brought them up in a very loving way. 
I've done many loving things for the church, for other Christians. But notice God still told the young Titus to teach what is sound love. So for aged men and women, you first and foremost have to know in the Bible what is love. What does it mean to love someone? Now we've been studying this in prayer meeting, the second great commandment, and I hope that if you cannot come for prayer meeting, at least watch it on our YouTube channel. Listen to the messages that are loaded on our website. Now, if I were to ask you, aged man, what is biblical love? Can you answer? Maybe I ask the young person. Uh, um, Mabel, all right, young woman, what is biblical love? Number one, we saw in the Bible, we learned in the Bible, when God loved the people, His aim is that they will learn to glorify God, to promote God's glory. You cannot say that I'm helping someone to love God, I'm helping someone, I'm loving Him, but actually the person is not glorifying God. Because you look at verse 5. Now, if there is wrong love, God, the word of God will be blasphemed. All right, then the next person, Hazel, what else that we learned in the Bible that is biblical love? It must afford protection, it must give protection. So God says, now you must love your neighbor. And in that he says, you must not suffer sin to be on your neighbor. In other words, you must not let your neighbor live in sin. So it is to promote the glory of God. It is to protect others. Well, last one, another young person. Um, Susan. Very good. It helps them to produce fruitfulness. Because Christ said, I lay down my life for you, the reason why I love you so much and died for you. Christ said, the reason why I did that is so that you will produce fruitfulness and the fruit will remain. Now I want to make two points. This is the definition of biblical love. Now, aged men and women, if you say, I, I want to teach others to love and I want to love, first and foremost, you have to know if you do anything that, that does not fulfill these three things, but that's the opposite, you are not loving, biblically. Every time you say, well, I must be sound in love, you must remember these three things. Every time you say, I want to love, teach people to love their children, it must fulfill these three things. Now you begin to have soundness in love. Now the second point I want to make is this. Why is it that the young people could answer? If I were to ask the elderly, how many of you could answer the biblical reasons from the Bible? Now my, my point is aged men. Before God says be sound in charity, God says be sound in faith. 
，在啊神说话的话语，在啊爱心上的哲学，不是前面就说到信心。If you do not study God's word， 如果你没有学习神的话语 ，If you do not learn God's word from the church and God appoints the church to teach you。If as aged you think actually I know a lot already, then why is it that when I ask that question, is there any Bible in, um, um, principles in your mind about what is sound love? Unless you keep learning. Unless at this age you say, God, I have very little time on earth left, God. I know a lot about gardening. I know a lot about business. I know a lot about politics. But I don't know how to love in a sound way. Now, aged men and women. Your time on earth is limited. You must feel that urgency. I want to live rightly before I meet God. How can you teach the young men, teach the young women, if you don't keep learning? So as we learn these three things, what are some of the applications? Now, first and foremost, God says, "Now, aged men, apply right love. Aged women, teach young women to love their children. What is that love?" First area. Now, because it is to protect people from sin, from God's judgment, because it is to promote the glory of God, because it is to produce fruitfulness in others. Well, the first place to start. In showing love, is to preach the gospel. You must show love towards others and your own family. But we have our own ideas. You know, well, I'm aged. But look at what I've provided for my children. Look. Look, they are very successful in life. I have given them great love. My parents did not manage to give these things to me, but I give all these things to my children. I am even more loving than my parents. And you teach the aged woman. You teach your daughters. You know, make sure you give all these good physical things to your children. But is that love? Are you teaching them to love rightly? Now, many of us are very willing to go to great extents to go all the way to do a lot of things for our children physically. That is not wrong. But that is not the love that God is talking about. Don't mix that up with when God says, "Be sound in love." Now here the word is to remind us: Have I truly loved? I'm willing to do so many things, but I rarely share the gospel with my children. I rarely share the gospel to my grandchildren. Let alone tell my daughters, my 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 sons. Make sure your children are saved. I 
Now, because we think that love is we have provided well for them, but we do not think God's definition of love is the provision of eternal salvation, sharing the gospel, providing that to them. To your friends also. You meet your relatives, you meet your friends for coffee, for tea. You're very happy. I'm very loving. Uh, let me pay, let me pay. But months after months, years after years, months after months and years after years, you get your children to come home to eat dinners. Your grandchildren, you spend a lot of time with them to care for them. But you hardly share the gospel. Well, the young person, your nephew, your nieces. Do you share the gospel with them? So that is the beginning of sound love. Now here also, the aged women are said, now please teach the young women, and that includes your daughters, your sons, uh, your daughters. To love their children. An aged man, please make sure that when you love your children and when you love your grandchildren, it better be the biblical kind of love. Now, why is it that we don't share the gospel? Now, I think very often as we grow old, we are afraid. The strange thing is, we become afraid of our children. We, we are afraid that they get upset at us. We are afraid that we offend them. We are afraid that it spoils the, the atmosphere when we are together. Now that is not what true love is. We are afraid to correct them when if they are believers, we are afraid to correct them. Well, they are grown up already, you give that excuse. But we are very happy to tell other Christians how to live. We are very quick to, we are very quick to criticize and tell church what to do. But we dare not correct our own children. Because we are afraid that they don't love us after that. That they get upset at us. So we rather not do all those things. That is not clarity of thinking when it comes to love. We learned in the Bible. Love, even when Christ said, I, I give my life and died for you, that's how much I love you. Christ was not talking about a physical benefit to you. That's why he said, I did all this so that you will bear fruit, spiritual fruit. So clarity of thinking and the right kind of love to tell your children and your grandchildren to change, that is biblical love. It's always about a spiritual purpose. Don't think of how much you have given them physically in life. Think of what have you not been giving them spiritually. Your life on earth is limited. I'm not cursing you, please understand that. God is telling you, this limited time on earth, 
please do not leave this world with regret that I did not do anything to share the gospel enough to my, to my children and my grandchildren. Don't be on the deathbed and say, I wish, I wish I told my children more about Christ. I wish my Christian children, I guided them better, I corrected them. I wish I learned more and therefore I know how to help them in my last days that God gave me on earth when you're on your deathbed. Is there urgency in your heart? Why do you think God told Titus, the young pastor, tell the aged that, tell them that? Now I'm very encouraged by um, an elderly who's been studying God's word. He said, I used to think that I knew a lot. And I was like those who say, this, I've been in church for so long. There's nothing much you can teach me. I know a lot. Maybe I can teach you. But this elderly, but this elderly say, I just attended one round of basic Bible knowledge and I realized how little I know. I must learn more. And I'm very, I'm very clear about one event last year that happened to an uncle of mine. I shared the gospel with him when I was a teenager and he rejected it. But last year I found out that he became a Christian some time back. And he had cancer and he was in his very last days of life. And he kept telling my family, my children are not saved. And those that profess Christ, to believe in Christ, their life shows that they're like unbelievers. I wish I knew more on how to explain the gospel to, to, my, to my child. I wish I knew how to answer all the questions that they have, that they ask me and I cannot answer. I can only simply say, well, Jesus can save you. Please believe in Jesus. And nothing else was in his ability to answer questions that his children had. As the father, he knew that these were my last days. My son, my daughter may go to hell forever and I did not do anything much when I, was, when I could. The married, I look at my grandchildren and my days are so limited. I wish I had more time. So, do you know what is being sound in charity? Means your thoughts about this true love is very clear in your heart and mind at your aged stage of life. Love, you tell your, your son and daughter, love your children. But you do the opposite. You're not sound in your love towards your grandchildren. Many grandparents, in fact, it's so common that people make children's clothing that says things like that. Grandma and granddad spoils me. Daddy and mommy disciplines me. Why is that so common at, for the aged? 
You want your grandchildren to love you. So you don't want to correct them. That is not true love. You want them to like you. You don't want them to um, think that you're boring to be with. So your idea of love is this. Aged men, aged women. Your love, your idea is bring them to playground. Buy them ice cream. Buy them more toys. Toys that their parents may not want to buy them. Bring them on holidays. Play and have fun with them. Then you say, yeah, I have love, I'm loving, I'm a loving grandfather, a loving grandmother. In the Bible, love means always these three things. Protect them from sin. It makes sometimes a need to correct them. To deal with things that you know they may, your own child, your own son and daughter may not like you to talk about. Whether as a Christian or a non-Christian. Now, I overheard a conversation when I was eating. The person was sitting just in front of our, our table. When the mother went to order, order food for the table, the grandmother was with the grandchild. They had drinks already, Coca-Cola and whatever. And then the grandma said, drink a little bit. And that child says, but mommy doesn't like me to drink this. Now it makes the grandmother even more excited. Now this is a chance for the grandchild to like me more than grandma than mother. It, it's okay, drink a little bit, that is our secret. And then she opened her bag, she had cigarettes. And then the child says, Oh, mommy says you shouldn't smoke. Then the grandma said, It's alright, just don't tell mommy. The child got to drink what she wants to drink. Of course, the child loves the grandmother. All right. Sometimes you say the, the grandma, the parents say, "Don't buy this," and then the grandma, ah, the grandma and grandfather, ah, they like that. Never mind. I'll buy it for you. Because on our last days on earth, we like our grandchildren to like us. We want our children to just have a very happy environment with us. In the last days. But that is not what God says. He says, please wake up your ideas. Sound in charity means wake up your mind about what is charity. Now, the worst kind of love that is very common today for grandparents towards grandchildren is this. Is fighting, competing for your grandchild's love. Or even for your children's love. Now I want my son to love me more than my son to love my wife or my husband. So I will I will not correct his sins. I will let him do what he or she likes. Let the husband or the wife do the nagging. Same for grandchildren. Now, the bottom line problem of this 
wrong love that is very prevalent today is this. Bring your children back more often. If not, I will, I will, I will, um, I'll, me and my grandchildren, we, we will not be close. Is it wrong to be close? Definitely not. Should grandchildren, should grandchildren know their grandparents and love them? Definitely. But sometimes it's at the expense of their family worship. It is at the expense of their serving God together. And very often it is because you're competing. I want my grandchildren to love me. Actually, in your heart is, I want them to love me a lot, a lot, a lot. Even if they love you, love me more than you, I don't mind. Now I say again, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be close with your grandchildren. But you must remember, teach the young women to love their children. Don't compete with their affections. Don't compete with their affections. Teach them that they must obey their parents, must love their parents, not you. Now, note, read carefully. God did not say, teach them to love children. God did not say, teach them to love your grandchildren. God says, teach them to live to love their children. The children belongs to them, not yours. But sometimes you almost make it like, please go go and do all this. I will look after your child. We encourage them to leave their children with you. Now I'm thankful for some grandparents. I'm thankful for some grandparents. Uh, they understand this. They say, no, I want you to spend more time with daddy and mommy. Now we cover more of that next round. Because there is one very big question. In verse 5, teach the young women to be keepers at home. So, to be a housewife. A lot of questions about that. From grandparents even. What is the biblical understanding? What are the exceptions? Are there exceptions? So next round, God willing, God will use this passage to help the aged grandfather, grandmother to understand this concept about your child being a housewife. <coughs> about your wife, your, your daughter being a housewife, a keeper at home. I, I encourage you to submit questions. Now, but back to this. So, are you loving your own children? If you hardly talk to them about the gospel in your very last days on earth, your last day may be today, seniors. We have people in our church, the seniors, that died within three days of being diagnosed with a cancer. You know who he is. I remember he held my hand and said, Pastor, please pray for me. I remember he held my hand in the hospital and said, Pastor, please pray for me. And he knew that his children were living in sin, although proclaiming to be Christian, living in disobedience. He 
he probably wished he did more to deal with that because now the one person that has the greatest authority in their children's life have failed. Now the last thing about love is love towards your spouse. The right kind of love, aged man. Don't look at them and say, no, she's healthy. She lives in a nice house. I saved enough for, for, for even after I die for her to live on. I've loved her well. That is not sound love. I hope as aged men, you wake up to one idea. When you read in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, about the husband's love to the wife. There is nothing in there about your physical provisions. So wake up to the idea in your last days. But everything in there is about spiritual leadership and sanctifying her, making her godly. Now understand one thing, aged men and young men, if you want to get married or if you're married God will hold you and I accountable for our wives when we meet Him face to face because he gave men, husbands, very clear instructions about how to love the wife and help her spiritually, lead her. Now, grandfathers, the day when you gave your daughter away, for marriage. I'm sure before they said, you better take care of my daughter. This is my daughter. God tells us the same thing in Ephesians 5. You better make sure that this daughter of mine, she is spiritual and godly and you present her that way to me. Now, aged man, let's wake up to this idea. My limited time on earth, whatever I choose to do, it is always to help my wife be more spiritual. I don't need, I don't need her to beg me to come to church. I will be telling her, let's go to church. Because now you are the head of the home. You must now start conducting family worship. Please know family worship is not a BP thing. That is what people keep saying. What's a BP thing? Family worship is taught by God before the children of Israel entered the promised land even. The fathers leading the family spiritually, teaching them spiritually, being the example of godliness to the home. It's all in Deuteronomy chapter 6. It's God's way of living for the family. So you go back and read Deuteronomy chapter 6 and read Ephesians chapter 5. Then agent man, you say, actually, I've, I've never sat down with my wife and say, let's now do family worship, let's sing hymns to God. Uh, 
I, I've never, I've never said wife. Now we we pray together about church and about um, these things in our life. You've never opened the Bible and read the Bible together. And learn enough of the Bible to explain to her things about how you are living together. What she and you need to begin to change before you die. That is what it means to be sound in charity. It is not doing a BP family worship, it's doing Deuteronomy 6 or commandments. You see, in your aged life, there is a very wonderful time ahead. And how, how as grandfather and grandmother love the grandchildren, if you are not promoting, if you are not protecting your children and your grandchildren from living a sinful lifestyle, <coughs> by not wanting to teach them and show them from the Bible. If you're not teaching them to obey God for His glory, to promote fruitfulness in them, get them to return to church. Then you know you are still in the extended time God gives to you as aged men and women still not doing what God says, be this before you meet me. Are you going to walk out of this room and say, I really don't want to think about how I should love my children and my grandchildren. I want to continue in my old comfortable ways. Maybe when I'm in deathbed, I'll give them, please be like that. You may not have a chance to talk to them before you die. I can't tell you how many times aged men and women on the deathbed for Christians, their first thought and their conversation with me is about how they have failed their wife and their children. It will come to you, believe that. That is why God says, Titus, teach the aged men and women this now. The next time we return, we'll learn more about the next phrases. But there's no use learning a lot. But not going through the discomfort of changing. To soundness in charity. Let us pray. Now, someone asked, what is the difference between psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs? Someone also asked, can we just have instrumental music? Can, can we worship God with instrumental music?